Ka Ko. Today we have Kumu Kaipo with us. Real quick introduction, Kumu Kaipo was born and raised in Ko, Honolulu. For those of you who don't know, that's Chinatown area of Oahu, Eo Chinatown. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, he received his bachelor's and master's from the University of Hawaii at Manoa and was a part of the ethno-mathematics program in 2013-2014 um, and joined their staff the following year. He currently is a kumu of sorts, mathematics specialist at Kamehameha Schools, our KL campus, and uses his ethno-mathematic framework knowledge to assist other kumu in the integration of mathematics or makemakika in grades six through eight. Yeah, so mahalo kumu kaipo for joining us. Um, you know, this term ethno-mathematics, I've heard it, I can kind of like assume what it means, but could you share a little bit of what what is ethno mathematics? So, if you anyone's ever heard the term ethnobotany, basically it's a study of botany in terms of a particular culture, a particular social structure, um, native species. I guess you could say with ethnobotany. For ethnomathematics, it's very similar. What are the types of math a culture would have used? And culture is kind of a loose term. It could be an ethnic culture. Hawaiian, Japanese, um, European, in, in, in anywhere to that effect. Or it can also be a social type of uh, culture. How would hip hop artists use mathematics? How would graffiti artists use mathematics of that sort? So the ethnomathematics, um, the term ethnomath was created by um, a professor, um, Dr. Ubiritan de Ambrosio in Brazil in the 80s, I believe. And UH Manoa, under Dr. Linda Furuto, my mentor, she helped start that program. She will never credit herself. It will always be, um, it's everybody. So what I love about the program is that we empower any teacher. We started off with um, local students be, that are, the, are pre-teachers. And then the program has now expanded to being a master's program. And we've welcomed teachers from all over Hawaii, Hawaiian, non-Hawaiian, um, math, not math. We had English teachers, social studies teachers go through a program. And we've even had um, Canadian teachers come through. And basically, we empower these teachers. How, how would your students use math in the classroom? How would they use it naturally um, in their environment? Um, so in the chat, I actually put a link to our, I say our, because I used, I, I worked with them for a few years and I've taken a back seat for a little bit. Um, but it's the Ethnomathematics Curriculum Library um, for teachers that were part of the either pre-service program, the professional development version of Ethnomath, and the current master's program. Everyone is required to produce at least one lesson or unit of an Ethnomath lesson. So on that website, um, I can, can, can I share my screen really quickly? Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and let me share. There we go. You should be able to do a quick run through of what it looks like. So it's like a treasure trove for math people. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so my mentor uh, wanted to make sure that teachers that came to this program, we created a basically a free repository of Ike, of how is math incorporated in the classroom. And this is all, way over 10 years worth of lesson plans. And they can be used, even though they're, some of them are designed for a calculus course or a fifth grade math course, you can easily take them and apply them to different grade levels. So these are just some of the types of active math lessons we've had. You can see who the teacher author was in the year they did it, the standards they use. And we've incorporated both common core math standards and the NGSS, the science standards. And depending on if the teacher came from a private school or public school, you'll even see Naho Penao, which is the, I believe the DOE's version of AOLA, or it's the pre-AOLA. This definitely came out way before AOLA did. Um, but anyone's welcome to go to the website, it's free. You can select the grade level you wanna work with. If you are aware of Naho Penao, what kind of uh, standards are there, what type of math, and then what kind of science you wanna look at. And everything there is, again, is free. So we've had teachers um, talk about these. And what I loved about this one, um, Stacey George, 
she at the time she was a fifth grade teacher and um, I believe in Everside. And she noticed that her students were afraid of bees because they had a garden that they would malama, a class garden or school garden. And the kids would be afraid of bees. And in her mind, the students they didn't know how to empathize with the bees. The bees are important. How to aloha these bees. So she made this whole unit to help students understand why bees are important. So they talked about how pollen gets around. Um, they talked about how, why the honeycombs are shaped as hexagons. They talked about how they support the environment. So even though she had math lessons throughout, she, she brought in the science component. She brought in the um, eco ecological component, the English component, they have to do write-ups. So ethnomathematics is just all these different ideas you can do. Uh, one of my favorite lessons that I got, that got me excited about ethnomathematics was um, a calculus unit. And if you know calculus, it's a study of the change of, of speeds, change of numbers, the rate numbers are changing. And so the student that created that lesson, basically he was a, um, a bodyboarder, love bodyboarding at Sandy's. He made a whole calculus unit on bodyboarding with just his iPhone, because it has GPS on it. And he would track data as he would surf waves and plot data. And he would see which sections of Sandy's or um, of Avamalu would be the best places to go surfing or bodyboarding. Akamai, yeah, I love that. Like when you talk about ethno mathematics, it's it, the world we interact in and where the opportunities for learning, especially in Maki and Makika Hi. are. I would have never thought bodyboarding and calculus. And that kind of led me to one of our questions because oftentimes our kumu, our math kumu, especially at the high levels, mm -hmm. it, we, we struggle with trying to infuse HCBE because mm -hmm. how, how do we even begin to have that conversation with calculus? But that's a great example of how you might be able to do it. Um, are there any other examples that maybe you can pull that that are similar to that? So there, so here's, I, everyone always asks me, how do you come up with your ideas? And what I always say is start simple. Think about yourself, your personal life. What is it that you do that brings you passion? Are you a bodyboarder? Um, are you a weaver? So I'm a weaver. Um, do you love to farm or do your garden work? Think there, because in the work you do, there is some math involved. There is something there. And if you use that as your passion, you can create a whole project or a whole unit for your kids to work on. And the reason I like that is when you teach not just the content itself, but you teach what you're passionate about, the Haumana will see the passion. And they're gonna be more invested because they know you're sharing yourself more. So I will start there. What is something you do that you could bring into the classroom? Another suggestion, um, if that's difficult, Another suggestion I always tell people is, what is your curriculum? Go in your textbook, go in your lesson plans. What is a word problem that's in there? Take that word problem and expand it into a whole project. Um, I actually made this project last night <laughs> This um, for my next unit. My current unit is on area of triangles and area of quadrilaterals. And I looked at a word problem that basically had the different shapes and the students had to just find the area of these three and then recreate a new shape that has the same area. So I was like, okay, that's too boring. I need something infused, something that's relevant, culturally relevant. And I know my social studies counterpart and my English counterpart in sixth grade, they did food sustainability already. Um, they did a food sustainability unit in Hawaiian studies, I mean, in um, social studies. And the English teacher did Socratic seminar debating on um, what are good canoe plants, what are food um, stable resources we have. So I figured, okay, they already know that EK. I'm going to make them design a mala. So they have to design a mala using um, Desmos, one of our math programs, a graphing calculator. And they are given requirements. You have to have a rectangle with this area. You need a triangle with this area. You need a trapezoid with this area. Design the mala how you want, but just know that each shape will house a different plant. So you got to decide, do I want Maya in this rectangle? Do I want 
um, color in this triangle. Just again to think about, okay, which plant will I use? And why would I put it in this larger area or this smaller area? Simple things like that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, these are the simple low end. You can, anyone can dive in. Some people can go on the very large end to whole projects. Mm -hmm. I like that idea of, you know, if you're not sure where to start, work with what you got. And, mm -hmm. you know, why recreate the wheel? Mm -hmm. Let's just innovate the wheel and make the wheel prettier, if you will. Um, but I love that example of like where you started and then where the Ha'avina ended up. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is one other project I just remembered. One of our teachers from Keao High School, um, his math, um, ethnomath project was about the goat they have on their campus. And they had to determine how can the two goats on their campus be separated so they don't cross each other. Like, oh, that's interesting. But that inspiration right on the school grounds so and and real world application too right when we think about like 21st century skills and all of that we want our kumo to be creating you know assessments that have application <laughs> what better way than a goat on your campus solve a real world problem you guys yeah, seriously yeah Any solution you will be held accountable no <laughs> Uh, so I guess, you know, we kind of segued into it a little bit, but I want to pick your brain since you have a lens that's make makika, um, HCBE, Kamehameha, we mm -hmm. are, you know, full steam ahead and we still have some Kumu who are struggling to grasp the concept of HCBE, not like, you know, generally we understand it, but like in your own words, with your lens, your specific lens, how would you describe HCBE? Oh, HCBE, that's a, that's a, it's a definitely loaded word. Um, I think, I know most people, I'll, say, I'll start there. Most people think of HCBE, meaning that we need to have hula and oli and um, ka, uh, lo i kalo in our content. And that's not necessarily true. It is, it's part of it for sure, but HCB also includes the, um, the characteristics of a Hawaiian. What are ways that we uphold ourselves? How do we interact with each other? So one thing that I appreciate at our, our campus, at Hawaii campus, is our um, learning and teaching expectations that we do with our OEV Edge, our way, our methods of incorporating HCB. And one of the things that we look at is the Ohale expectations, and which basically means in your classroom, how are you fostering multi-generational multi learning? How are you fostering multi-centered learning? So even by doing interdisciplinary units, working with the other teachers in your cohort, in your, in your grade level, that in itself is a Kahale model because you're, you're not the expert of all. You cannot be the expert of all. You can rely on someone else as an expert. Um, part of our culture is even mo'olelo, storytelling. So what mo'olelo can, do you have? Well, we know the, the Pele and Hiyaku stories, we know the Kamapua stories, but what about the, the local stories? Could even be the, the chiefs of your aina. It could be uncle down the street that used to malama the store for 30 years before he passed away. Those mo'olelo can be brought into the classroom. That is part of our Hawaiian culture. Um, but yeah, even, even how the kids learn, how are they taking that knowledge and applying it elsewhere? Our kupuna were great innovators. I, re I truly believe, and this is kind of funny and some people might be controversial to them, but if kupuna had metal and we had power tools early, we would have chance for power tools because they love innovation. They truly love innovation. Agree. I ka ko'o piha. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about all these examples you're throwing out there. And you know, just for our Kumu who maybe are a little bit hesitant, mm -hmm. I think some of them don't even realize that some of the things we already do are considered HCBE. Yes. The approaches and you know, like just the way, like you said, the characteristics, like some of us already do that. It's just maybe for for those of us who have that that kuana ike, that lens to mm -hmm. point it out and to show them and to acknowledge. So mahalo for, for bringing that up because there are a lot of kumu doing great things mm -hmm. already centered in HCBE that maybe they don't realize it. 
Okay, um, we're gonna I have one more, a uh, few more questions for you, but you, you know, you've been spot on in sharing all your Make Makika lens type Ike, so mahalo. Um, but I guess for, for our Kumu in Make Makika mm -hmm. and, and trying to figure out and chart a pathway forward with HCBE, Let's just say it's a brand new kumu, mm -hmm. not from Hawaii, no kuana ike Hawaii. Like, where would you recommend, or how would you recommend, where we, to get started? Ooh, good question. Million um, question. <laughs> no, definitely. I would. I would definitely say that the uh, Ethomath library that I just shared, because you'll notice in there a lot of those things aren't necessarily Hawaiian. Some a lot of it is. But for a teacher not from Hawaii, we don't ex I don't expect them to be able to olelo Hawaii in one month. You need to know how to speak Hawaiian. You need to know the rules of Hawaiian culture. It's, it's impossible. They should learn how to share their own culture. Bring that. Wherever you come from, start there. Get to know the students. I think um, part of ACBE is Palina building. I think the most successful teachers, math or not, is building that palina with the kids or any of those kids. Start there and then learn, ask them, learn about what is local for those students because Maui students are different from KL students, different from Honolulu students. What is it that they do? And after that, I'd say get involved. Is there a, a, school, a school mala? Is there a free Hawaiian language class, classes? Do a lingo has Hawaiian. Start, I would do that next. Be familiar with the culture. Definitely don't shut out the culture. Be open to more. Yeah. And that's where you can get your inspiration from. Mahalo Nui. And, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll find all those resources and I'll link them in, in our course. And so Kumu can access, especially that ethno mathematics treasure trove that you shared with us from Co College of Ed. Yeah. College of Ed, yes. Yeah. Um, but mahalo for your time. We super duper appreciate you and just giving us like insight because for myself, I'm not a math kumu. So, I, you know, like you said, tap on people who know their stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think what I, I will also tell math teachers too is don't be afraid to bring experts into the classroom. I know the curriculum is nuts. We have a lot of standards to cover, but it'll... Even though you have to make room for experts in the long run, the students will understand the, the standards better because they're applying it. I love that. Yeah, because oftentimes we get so fixated on like the standards and the goals, you know, the targets we have to meet. Um, but if we just let go a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah, just let go control just a little bit to allow these authentic experiences to happen, then the, we get there anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nani no, wamahalo for your time today, Kumu Kaipo. And I will also link your um, your website in the chat because I've been fangirling and looking at your your Google site. And I need to update that. <laughs> but, but even just as is, it's a really also a really good example of how to integrate math with with an HCBE lens. So uh -huh. mahalo for your time today, and. Lucky my kai for the rest of this school year. Oi pu, everyone, all you folks too. Whatever you do is enough. I'll say that. Oya no, mahalo. Mm -hmm.